So we've all known for a while that we can remove Microsoft Edge from Windows, but typically it comes back after your own Windows update. How would you like that not to happen? If so, stay tuned. Now, why is it that Microsoft has no problem allowing people in Europe to remove Edge, but no one else? And why is it that when people in Europe remove Edge, it stays gone and doesn't seem to affect the function of Windows? Yet when we remove Edge through programs like Revo Uninstaller, it ends up back on the system the next time we run Windows Update. And after you remove Edge, tons of features from within Windows are broken. It turns out though, this is all by design. So today, I'm gonna show you how to fix all of it. But first, I gotta pay some bills. So check out today's sponsor. Are you still running Windows 11 unactivated because the license just costs too much? Then you should check out today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, where you can get a valid Windows 11 license for around $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark and actually be able to change your desktop background with a valid license for Windows 11. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 11 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 11 and click the link that says change product key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark. And check out the description for deals on not just Windows, but Office 2. Now, on with the video. So, let's jump on the system and we'll get started. Okay, here we are in a fresh install of Windows 11, and as you can see, Edge is pretty prominent all over the start menu, the taskbar, and the desktop. Microsoft sure likes to throw Edge out there. And as you can see, if you click on Start, and we're gonna go into Settings real quick, and then go into Apps, and then from Apps, we're gonna click on Installed Apps. And if we scroll down to Microsoft Edge, if we hit the three little dots, the uninstall option is grayed out, so we can't select it. Now, there are ways to get rid of Edge, and I've shown you how to do that before through Revo Uninstaller and stuff like that. However, by doing it that way, you are essentially just asking Microsoft to reinstall it because it's still a provisioned app. So the next time Windows updates, it's gonna put all of its provisioned apps back in like Microsoft Edge. However, if we could get this uninstall function to work, then it will remove Edge as a provisioned app and in turn remove it from Windows Update as well. And to do that, we're essentially going to use exactly the same system that Microsoft uses to remove it in Europe. We're just gonna use it everywhere else. Let me show you how to do that. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is open up your primary hard drive. This is gonna be C drive in this case. We're gonna go into Windows, and then from Windows, we're gonna to wanna to scroll down into System32. Now we're looking for a specific configuration file that's called Integrated Service Region Policy Set.json. So what we're gonna do is type INT to start our search here. And here's the file that we're looking for. It's this really long name right here. And now unfortunately, we can't edit this file right now. Because if we hit on Properties, go to Security, and then click Advanced, you'll see that this is owned by the trusted installer, which we are not. So we only have read and execute permissions on this specific file. So we can't actually change it. So the way to do that is just, just to click this little link right here that says change. So once we hit that, we're gonna hit advanced, we're gonna hit find now, and we're gonna change the ownership to the administrators or the administrator group. And then go ahead and hit okay, okay. And then you're gonna to wanna to hit okay one more time and then click advance to get back into this here. Now the reason why we wanna do that is because we wanna give more than just read and execute control over to the administrator group, even though we are the owners. So we're gonna click on change permissions, click on administrators, hit edit, and then we wanna grant full control to administrators. Hit okay, okay again, and then hit okay again. And at this point we should be able to edit it but we can't just edit it in Notepad like that. Would be nice if we could, but unfortunately we need to run Notepad as administrator. But I did open it in Notepad just to show you a little trick that we can use in the new version of Notepad. See, Notepad will open the last file that it had open once it's closed. So if I was to close Notepad right now, the next time it opens, it's gonna open 
with that JSON file. But the way I want to open it is I want to click on start, right click and run it as an administrator. And then by doing that, it'll run it as administrator, but it'll also reopen the file that we had open. It's a little trick to help you so you don't have to hit file open and then maneuver all the way into system 32. It just makes it easier to open the file. Now from here, there's a few that we want to change. Obviously edge is uninstallable is definitely going to be the first one. So to enable it, we're going to change disabled to enabled just like that. And then the next one is, is the user can disable web search. We also want to change that one from disabled to enabled. And then the next one we're going to have to search for because it's a little further down on the list. So we're going to hit edit and find, and then we're going to search for third party search providers. And then right here, third party search providers show in search. We're going to change that from disabled to enabled. So once we change all those, we can go ahead and hit file and save. And then at this point, we need to go ahead and restart Windows. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. Now, while Windows is restarting, let me explain what we just did. Because of a law passed in Europe called the Digital Markets Act, Microsoft was forced to allow people in Europe to uninstall Edge. Now, instead of just allowing everyone to uninstall Edge to comply with this new law, Microsoft built an entire system called the Integrated Services Region Policy. This policy acts as a regional feature gate that can selectively enable or disable specific operating system behaviors, such as the ability to uninstall Microsoft Edge or even decouple Bing from the Windows search. These gates are enabled or disabled based on the user's geographic location of the installed operating system. Now, all we did was modify the configuration file for that system to make it turn on specific feature gates. So let's jump back in the system and see if we can uninstall Edge now. Okay, so if we click on start here, we go into settings and just like before, we go into apps, we go into installed apps and then scroll down here until we find Microsoft Edge and then we can click these buttons and as you can see, we are no longer grayed out now. We can go ahead and hit uninstall then hit the uninstall button again. Hey, say yes to the user account control and believe it or not, there's going to be one more error screen that comes up before we're finished because Microsoft really doesn't want you to do this. But once we wait for a second, you'll see it come up. There it is. It says when uninstalling Microsoft Edge, your apps and widgets that depend on Edge will no longer be available. Now this isn't actually true, but that's okay. We'll get to that in a minute. We're just going to go ahead and hit uninstall. And on this system, we shouldn't be able to do that because as you can see, it's gone. It's gone from the taskbar. It's gone from the list here. As you can see here, it's no longer in the start menu and it's not on the desktop anymore. And if we go to time and language and we go into language and region, as you can see, this system is set up for the United States and its current country and region is the United States. However, the current country and region is irrelevant when it comes to this topic. The device setup region is what's important. This has to be in Europe in order for those features to be enabled by default. We just enabled them by not default, but they're default now, right? And now since we uninstalled Edge the official way and didn't just rip it out with Revo uninstaller, Microsoft will honor this choice and not reinstall Edge the next time you run Windows Update. However, they may replace the JSON file that we just modified, but even if they do, Edge will stay gone forever at this point. Unless, of course, you reinstall it from the Microsoft Store, but that's on you if you do that. But unless you had another browser on the system, though, before doing this, then you have no way to access the internet right now. So let's jump back on the system and I'll show you how to install a browser without a browser. Because you know, that's what they say is the only real purpose for Edge is to install Chrome or Brave or whatever other browser you wanna use. Let me show you how to do it without it. Okay, so we can go ahead and close this here and there's a couple ways we can get another browser. We could just, if you want, just open up the Microsoft Store and then from the Microsoft Store, search for the browser you want. So if we go Brave, and hit enter, you'll see that the first selection should be the Brave browser, which I actually kind of find, a, find it funny that Mo the Mozilla Firefox is right next to Brave because we search for Brave. Th there's no Brave in Mozilla Firefox or Opera or Opera GX or any other browser. 
but I, I don't know. It's just Microsoft's way of using their search, I guess. So you can click here, click install, and then you'll have the Brave browser. However, there's another way that I like to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this, click on start and type in CMD. And then from here, we wanna click run as administrator right here. Hit yes to the user account control. And then from here, we wanna type in winget install brave.brave .brave space, and then we wanna go dash dash source and then we wanna choose WinGet. Now by default, Microsoft is going to use the Microsoft Store as the source. And I, I just had a lot of problems installing stuff from the Microsoft Store, so by default, I always select source WinGet. And that will use WinGet as the repository for WinGet, which honestly, I think it's the way it should be, right? But either way, it's gonna take it a minute for it to install, and once it finishes, I will meet you back here in Windows. All right, so here we are. We have Brave now installed. I'm gonna go ahead and close our command prompt. And then the first thing I wanna do is just open up Brave. But typically, I would set Brave as my default browser. But at this point, you shouldn't have to because since we removed Edge and Brave is our only browser, Brave is by default our default browser because it is the only browser we have. So at that point, we don't actually need to change any settings. But from what you're probably used to is when you typically uninstall Edge, you would use if you used web search from within the start menu, like for instance, if we search for cyber CPU, you'll see that you'll get search results. However, these search results are specifically tied to Bing, unfortunately. But typically when you would click on them, nothing would happen. It would just literally do nothing. Now there's third-party programs that you could use in order to get this to open in your default browser. But if you set the settings that I told you to set earlier, if you click on this right now, it will in fact honor your default browser just the way that it should. So by searching for something, all you would have to do is search, and then once you get your search, you would click on it and it'll open in your default browser, which is the way that Windows should work in the first place. However, there's one caveat to this though. If you click on, I'm gonna go ahead and close this window again, and if we click on settings, and we click over on privacy and security, and then from privacy and security, we scroll down to search. You'll notice that down at the end right here, this is a new set of settings that we haven't seen before in Windows. Well, if you live in Europe, I'm sure you've seen them, but for us in America, we have it. And as you can see, it has Microsoft Bing set up as the default search. Well, that is your start menu search right there. And you should be able to, as the way this is configured, even if you click the three dots, you can see how it's move up or move down to change the priority of different search engines. This is designed to have different search engines in it, not just Microsoft Bing. So why don't we add one in it like Brave or Google Chrome? Well, there's a reason why we can't. So yeah, at this point, we should be able to set a default search provider to a different search engine other than Bing. The problem is after two years of having this process fully documented by Microsoft and available for Google, Brave, Yahoo, and every other search engine on the internet, nobody's actually made one. So unfortunately at this point, you're stuck using Bing, but it is possible to use someone else if those search engines would just make a plugin. Now the only reason that I can come up with for why no search engine wants to implement this is because they would have to do it while catering to Microsoft's requirements, whatever those requirements are. And they'd have to also pay Microsoft because these search providers would have to use a digital signature. And it would only be available to users in Europe. Now, if Microsoft opened this process up worldwide, it might make a difference. But as of right now, Bing is your only option. And it's not by force from Microsoft. They've opened this up to every other search engine on the internet. They just don't wanna do it. But with that said, there is a feature in Canary Channel right now for Windows 11 that simply honors your default browser and search engine. So if you're using Brave as your default browser and Brave Search as your default search engine in Brave, then Windows just uses that in the start menu.
However, the Canary Channel is the absolute lowest tier of Windows Beta, and many features in Canary never become features implemented into Windows. So right now, it's just a really cool feature that's being tested, and who knows if we'll ever actually see it live. So with that said, it's simply honoring your default browser but not your search preference. And if that isn't enough for you, it's a lot easier to disable web search as it was before we changed these settings. So let's jump back on the system and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so before we had to go into the registry, we had to change registry keys and things of that nature in order to disable web search within the, within the start menu. Now, since all these European settings have been turned on, it's a little bit easier because all you have to do is that. Yep. It's literally that easy. If I come down here and search for cyber CPU now, just local search now. It doesn't use any web search whatsoever. Yeah, it'd be really nice if we could just do this in Windows. Now, here's the thing. Microsoft could simply flip a switch and give everyone access to all of these options tomorrow. The elaborate hoops we just jumped through today exist for one reason, to stop most users from accessing these features outside of Europe. In fact, that's the only reason this whole system exists. Its entire purpose is geographic gatekeeping. It locks away choices based on where you live. If Microsoft opened this up globally, people would uninstall Edge. So they hide it because every forced Edge install feeds Bing usage and Bing usage feeds ad revenue. And you know what? That's not even what makes me mad because, you know, of course Microsoft does. What really gets me is the double standard that a lot of companies use. Because here's the thing, we put up with European regulations in America all the time because companies don't want to hassle with region specific services. Like for instance, my camera stops recording at 29 minutes because of a stupid EU tax rule on camcorders. Canon could easily ship different firmwares for Europe and America, they just won't. And it's not only that, social media platforms apply Europe's strictest speech rules worldwide because it's easier than running separate systems. But when a European law forces Microsoft to let people uninstall Edge, suddenly they're engineers of the year, building this intricate region lock system to comply only where legally required. I mean, yeah, they'll pour resources into protecting their browser and search revenue. But when regulations that hurt other people in other countries, nah, they don't really want to deal with that. Because ultimately, that's the bottom line. When the rules threaten Microsoft's income, they'll move mountains to contain it. When it only helps consumers, they'll just let it spill over or in most cases, ignore it completely. But with that said, this should be a permanent fix. But unfortunately, it's not. Because at some point, Windows Update is going to replace the JSON file with the default version. And when that happens, Edge will definitely stay gone but clicking on search results in the start menu will no longer open in your default browser. It'll function the same way as it did before. So you may have to bookmark this video or just keep good notes. You can also just back up the JSON file and copy it back whenever you need to. And also with that said, if you just updated Windows 11 to 25H2, check out this video right here. These are settings that you need to change in 25H2 as soon as possible. And as always, you guys have a great day.